four wheels, four doors. This is the very first time for me to ever be in this situation. Two people calling this one SUV home. It's hard. It's cold. Yeah, it's cold now. And we really don't like to turn on, on to put the air, I mean the heater, because it runs out the gas and then we're going to be stuck without gas. Jane and her partner said they started living in their SUV after they lost their jobs and drained their savings. We've changed her name due to her circumstances. We're slowly, you know, spending our money that we did have put away and it just it ran out quicker than what we expected. The need for housing all the more urgent because this pair is about to become a trio. What are you going to do when the baby comes? When the baby comes, I should hopefully have a place by then. I'm more than sure I will. Jane didn't expect to be homeless and pregnant. I was uh, in shock because of my age. I wasn't trying to have no more kids right now. I'm happy. I'm happy. But at the same time, it was scary knowing that we're going to have another baby in in this situation. But here she is, 43 years old, not exactly sure how far along she is. At least we have our vehicle to sleep in. There's a lot of homeless people that don't even have that. There's no one looking into a new generation being born into homelessness. Is that baby going to make it? Is that baby not going to make it? And help is hard to find. All of our hotels are almost always full. A gut-wrenching 911 call back in November 2022 made it clear that the I-team needed to start digging. Emergency traffic for 911 at 11th Avenue in Madison. Emergency crews called to the zone. Phoenix's largest homeless encampment in the middle of the night. I need it for a 901 child in the middle of the street, 11th Avenue in Madison. Remains of a 20 to 24 week old fetus left by a fire next to a dumpster in the heart of the encampment. Police believed this case was a miscarriage, which begs the question. Do you think there are enough resources right now in the community to help the population of pregnant homeless women? No, I don't. Absolutely not. I mean, there are resources, but they're so small. The possibility of being homeless and pregnant never crossed my mind until covering that 911 call. It's not something Arizona even tries to track, despite a growing homeless population. I think it would just be groundbreaking to show that there really is this huge need, this unmet need in this population. And when it comes to homelessness, there you go. there's always more than meets the eye. So I'm just tired of this. I want my life back. It's no secret that there aren't enough resources to help all the people experiencing homelessness in Maricopa County. I think it is a huge, <laughs> underreported, understated, under-resourced, big problem. Everybody sees it. You drive down any street and you can see there's encampments, you know, on the overpasses and the dirt lots. Pregnant homeless women and families are kind of the hidden homeless. And when people are hiding, whether it's by choice or by circumstance, it's hard to know exactly how big the need can be. Despite a growing homeless population in the Phoenix metro area and the city's largest homeless encampment just a few blocks east of the state capital, Arizona doesn't track homeless pregnancies like some other states do. Arizona's Department of Health Services tracks births for each year, but doesn't monitor if a baby is born into homelessness. Cities don't collect this data when they go out for the annual point-in-time homeless count, and state agencies like Arizona's Department of Child Safety or the Medicaid program, AXIS, don't track this either and have no specific programs to help this specific population. We are always extremely busy. But Maggie's Place does. We've got a big tree of life over there. The nonprofit also... is one of the only providers we found that works exclusively with pregnant, homeless women. We're very well known at the street level. If you are homeless and pregnant and you know living on the street, chances are someone on the street knows where to send you. Whitney Thistle is the vice president of philanthropy at Maggie's Place, which has four maternity homes throughout the valley and a hub for resources in central Phoenix, offering everything from counseling to diapers. And we have about 35 different support groups on site every single month. Right now, their bed capacity each night is 26, and they're typically maxed out. And the best Whitney and her team can do to pinpoint the number of women who need help is to look at their call volume. It's about 70 calls a week of women who are actively seeking resources. They are living on the street or they might be maybe on a friend's couch or something. Of those 70 weekly calls, she estimates about a third are repeat women, desperate week after week to find some place to stay. The rest are unique. But they are pregnant and without housing, and we are unfortunately unable to serve them because we are at capacity. 
There aren't a ton of other options for pregnant women experiencing homelessness, and oftentimes a woman has to meet certain criteria to get help. Most resources aren't equipped to meet all the different needs an unsheltered pregnant woman might have. We are not the right setting for severe mental illness, for example. We're also not the right fitting for women who are actively fleeing domestic violence because we live in community. And sometimes the help is unwanted or challenging to navigate from the streets. Yeah, it's just terrible, tragic. Dr. Yvonne Patterson's heart sank when she heard about the fetus in the zone, especially knowing her clinic is just steps away on the human services campus. I would think that she should have sought out emergency, you know, medical treat care, maybe in an emergency room, or at the very least walk into our clinic and we would have called for emergency care. She's the outpatient medical director with Circle the City, a nonprofit that provides medical care to those facing homelessness. To be honest, we haven't seen a lot of pregnant women here. She estimates maybe once a month she'll see a pregnancy. Most of the time, if somebody's pregnant and we refer them, we won't see them again. It's not that we won't, but they don't come back. There are no maternity specialists on their team, so they refer women for specialty care to ValleyWise or try to find other nonprofits that could help shelter expecting moms. We probably see more patients who are experiencing either true homelessness or housing instability much more often than we actually believe that we are. ValleyWise doesn't track homeless pregnancies either, but Dr. Badisha Ray, an OBGYN at the hospital, says it's definitely something she sees. It's not always obvious. She looks for clues like patients carrying lots of clothes or food that won't spoil. Patients can be very fearful that they may be judged that they may have their children taken away from them, or that they, during pregnancy, may have cases where they have their child taken away from them after birth. Patients are very, very leery of even wanting to disclose that they may be experiencing these problems. So women might try to hide it, or sometimes hide themselves. I'm looking for, you know, where there's a bunch of trash and, and stuff on the ground, a bunch of people huddled in one area just signs of homelessness. Rich Heights is the lead outreach case manager with the Phoenix Rescue Mission. God bless, man. And when I see the people, that's what I'll pull over. And Phoenix Rescue Mission, offer water and hygiene, you know, it's an icebreaker for everyone. He spends his days trying to find and help the hidden homeless. There you go. He estimates that every few months he'll come across someone who is pregnant. And there's a lot of women that we've run into that didn't realize they were pregnant. What he can offer, a space in one of the rescue mission's programs, or a partner provider if there's room. It just all depends on uh, the waiting list that are involved, you know, if there's openings or not. If there's not, then we have to keep searching for another place that is. Which can be tough. Pregnancy itself may actually be a criteria by which patients are excluded from certain shelters. When they have a young child that they bring back after having a delivery, they now have to make sure that they go to a family shelter. There's certainly not enough availability for that either. Dr. Ray will work hand in hand nearly every day with hospital social workers, yeah. like Andrea McCluskey. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's heartbreaking. They are on waiting lists. I mean, they're doing everything that they need to do within the system, but still the access to the bed, the apartment, anything is so limited that uh, they just aren't able to get in quick enough. And even if there is space, not everyone can be convinced to take it. But quite often, they don't want no help. They're gonna, they already have a plan that they're gonna do it all on their own. And it doesn't always work that way. The lifestyle, the street style is just taking over, whether it's drug addiction, whatever. Even just being with the man that they're with, they don't wanna leave them to get the help. The fear, you know, it strikes into my mind, like what's gonna happen with that baby? Is that baby gonna make it? Is that baby not gonna make it? Are you ever scared? No. He will park in a safe a safe spot. I'm not really scared when I'm with him because I know that he does everything for the best of me, you know? Jane and her partner usually park at gas stations where they might be able to access a public bathroom and snacks. Oh, I had prenatal vitamins. I got over the counter. I when we first met her just before Thanksgiving, she hadn't gone to a doctor yet. Her bump getting bigger by the day, ankles swollen, crammed each night in the SUV. We get up every morning, like four in the morning, start our day and try and find pellets, you know. Right now that's what the thing is, so we're not trying to get locked up and get in trouble doing any, you know, wrong. 
They try to earn money selling the pallets, which could cover a motel room every now and again. But they haven't had much luck finding shelter. Honestly, I just want help getting into a place so we can relax maybe a week, <laughs> put our feet up and soak in a bath or something. And then, uh, you know, give us time to go get a, a job, you know, it's really hard. Most shelters we've identified won't take couples together. And if there's a newborn or other children in the mix, oftentimes only the mother can stay with them in the shelter setting. There's no resource for couples at all. It's either the female has to go and enter into some kind of program or the male has to go enter into a program. If you tell them about your other partner, it uh, makes it more complicated where they won't even probably help you out. In 2022, Maricopa County tried something new. We were testing what would happen with allowing couples and allowing pets, and it's been an enormous success of getting more and more people in who would not have otherwise engaged in services. TJ Reed is the homeless programs manager for Maricopa County. This is what um, the room looks like. And he's showing me a model room in one of the county's bridge hotels, essentially hotel rooms converted into temporary shelter space to help people transition into permanent housing. So it's very similar to like a hotel stay. Right now, they have 283 rooms across four leased hotels, but can serve more people than that because they take in couples together. Some will have uh, one bed and some will have two. They have served women who are homeless and pregnant in the hotel system, but didn't provide data on how often and pointed out that their population skews more male and like other homeless services. How often is the hotel full? All of our hotels are almost always full. Resources are finite, and there are catches. You can't just walk up, you have to be referred, and no drugs or alcohol are allowed on site. Although there are resources for sobriety, and there are case managers working with people in each room to plan steps away from homelessness. This is not a one person or entity job. Homelessness isn't even a thing in and of itself, right? Like, you're not just homeless. You're homeless because of something else, right? You're homeless because you don't have enough money to pay for rent, because of a disability, because of substance use issues, because, uh, you know, name it, right? I was in jail when I found out I was pregnant. They do urine tests when you get there and they it's like, no, you have um, my pregnancy, you know, I'm not pregnant. You have my um, urine mixed up with the other female's urine. Do my test again. They were like, no, you're pregnant. I'm like, no, I'm not. So, yeah, it was a lot of denial. Penny has been living on the streets on and off since she was 14. We've changed her name due to her circumstances. I stayed in uh, Central Phoenix, so mainly on Central, anything that was close to the light rail. You know, so uh, they run early hours. So if I got cold or too hot, I'd jump on the light rail. <laughs> now 30, she's endured a lot to simply survive. I was sexually assaulted a couple times being out there, you know. Um, you can't really rest while out there. You rest, but you can't rest as well. I was started going to psych wards, you know, and lying, saying I was suicidal, just to have a warm place to sleep, have a good meal. She struggled with sobriety, and that jail booking was a wake-up call. I can't have another child, you know, I'm not even in... A good position to have another baby you know I don't even have my other kids. What have you noticed when it comes to homelessness over the past decade? Oh huge increase yeah. Helen Bujak is the CEO of West Valley Health Equity and West Valley OBGYN. This is just one of our standard exam rooms. Of the five to six thousand women they see each year in their office she estimates that three to five percent or up to 300 pregnant women are unsheltered. Helen and her team see firsthand how homelessness can lead to other health concerns for mom and baby. If you're homeless, it's scary. I can't tell you how many women have told me that they've been raped because they fell asleep, because they couldn't stay awake. So it's a matter of, you know, their safety, and so a lot of times they will use to cope, whether that's methamphetamines or opiates, you know, whatever they might be able to get their hands on. When we went to their office in January, it was Carissa Riggs's first day on the job, an intensive treatment coordinator brought on in part to navigate the rising, overwhelming number of women who come to them facing substance use issues. 
when moms are having withdrawals, they don't feel well. So they're not drinking, they're not eating, they're not sleeping, they're not taking care of themselves, which is all crucial in development of baby and helping baby meet those milestones. So when that's not happening, then that's when we see um, delayed growth and you know smaller babies and birth weights, which leads to poorer outcomes. According to the state health department's latest child fatality review in Arizona from 2021, substance use caused 176 child deaths. Of that number, nearly a third were less than a year old. All of the deaths listed as 100% preventable. The state does not go further to break down how many of these babies were also experiencing homelessness, and the report explicitly links substance use to homelessness, recommending that communities should expand access to services for people with unstable housing. I just think that there's just a lack of beds, there's just a lack of space. I mean, there are resources, but they're so small, and there's definitely not enough to meet the need. Helen's husband, Dr. Nicholas Bujak, is the OBGYN at their clinic, and sometimes their family has gone so far as to put up their patients in hotels to try and ensure they get drug treatment along with prenatal care. Often he's coming to me and saying, hey, can you get them a hotel room for this many nights so they can at least don't have to be on the street until then, so that they, they don't get lost and they make it to their treatment spot because that's what often happens is we get them to commit and get them excited. Okay, they're going to do this. We want to make this change. We're going to do it. But then if the bed's not available for three to five days, that's three to five days that we can lose them to the substance and they won't show up. Does it always work? No. Does it mostly work? No. He always will tell me, he's like, even if, if I can affect one out of a hundred people and that make that change, then it'll be worth it. The one place we found that does track whether a baby was unsheltered is the office of the Maricopa County Medical Examiner when it's investigating deaths. The office labels these deaths as transient, and last year they investigated at least three of these deaths involving fetuses, listed as age zero. In all three cases, the mother tested positive for drugs, one mother telling doctors she didn't even know she was pregnant and had just used meth and fentanyl that morning. The reality is that many rehab centers also do not accept pregnant patients. And then that subsequent you know, lack of access to rehabilitation, drug rehab, however you want to look at that, then sort of trickles down to babies in our intensive care unit or unfortunately babies that may end up in the medical examiner's office. Those deaths reported by the medical examiner are just a snapshot of Maricopa County, an underrepresentation of the hidden homeless statewide. I think it would just be groundbreaking to show that there really is this huge need, this unmet need in this population. We are wanting to get out there and we want to follow these women and start tracking and, and collecting data and start journaling that. So there can be an argument of the standard of care of like, if we don't, if we ignore this and the reality of this is what, how this happens, there's a huge gap. We're missing a huge level of diagnosis. The team at West Valley OBGYN and West Valley Health Equity is trying to fill that gap. In February, they opened a new 16-bed shelter space in Phoenix, serving pregnant and parenting moms with kids. And they already have a growing wait list. Why take this on? Who else is going to? Yeah, who else is doing it? Operating services for pregnant, homeless women is not easy. 70% of our moms have experienced domestic violence. 40% of those had to be hospitalized. 50% have been involved in human trafficking. 60 to 70% substance abuse in their past. It's not easy emotionally. Our moms who come here are ashamed. And I, I wish that I could take that from them. And it's not easy financially. We desperately need more access to resources and unfortunately that comes at a cost from a community standpoint. We already are, you know, at the limits, if not beyond, of what we are capable of doing with the funding that we have available to us. If shelter or housing assistance isn't available for patients in need, Dr. Ray and the team at Valleywise have gotten creative, connecting patients with utility, food and public transportation subsidies instead. 
Trying to identify those patients who may actually have housing insecurity before they are experiencing homelessness. And then patients are able to reallocate the funds towards their rent. West Valley Health Equity and West Valley OBGYN rely on grants and Medicaid reimbursements. What is the cost of all of this? <laughs> well, not cheap. For the new house, with wraparound services for women in their care, the budget is hard to predict. Are we talking about a single mom? Or are we talking about a pregnant mom? Or are we talking about a pregnant mom with children? WIC will cover a lot of the food expenses, but some of the things that WIC falls short is, is like diapers. We're always gonna need diapers, you know, car seats, pack and plays. Those are gonna be the things that we will always have an endless ask for. For Maggie's place, every penny matters. It costs about $26,000 a year to house one mom. And they're not immune to inflation. Our food pantry, you know, once the food is stocked, it's gone. That has been our number one need is food drives right now. Obviously all the hygiene items and diapers and things like that, but we are seeing m moms who maybe haven't come to us for donation items before coming out of the woodwork for those items because, you know, it's expensive. The IT team uncovered that the state budget has actually earmarked spending for homeless pregnant women since at least 2018. The contract was awarded to Maggie's Place, first for $100,000 annually. Then, in 2022, it doubled to $200,000. But now, Maggie's Place stands to lose it all. Governor Katie Hobbs' 2024 budget proposal aims to revert that $200,000 back to the state health department so it can be used for, quote, pregnancy services that are inclusive of all options and support personal choice. After several requests, neither Governor Hobbs nor anyone on her staff would do an interview about this. You know, out of a $17 billion budget to cut $200,000 from an agency that is really living and breathing, supporting um, women in our community, you know, that, that is a little bit alarming. Other providers we've identified, like UMOM and Community Bridges, operate under their own budgets and have their own limitations on how many people they can serve at one time. And as we've said before, no place is a one-stop shop for all the resources a homeless, pregnant woman might need. There's more money, but there's also more coordination and strategy. Like, you could throw as much money as you want at some of these problems and they wouldn't be resolved unless you're doing it in the right way. After Penny was released from jail in August 2022, with the new shock of her pregnancy. Really tired of being homeless. It's very tiring, you know, tired of sleeping on the streets. I was sleeping at bus stops, literally anywhere. I could find a place that I thought was safe, I'd lay my head at. Me just sitting there one day and just having a conversation with God, like this isn't me, you know what I mean? This, I'm just tired of this, I want my life back. She started a faith-based program at the Phoenix Rescue Mission's Changing Lives Center. We're doing our deep cleaning. what we do. Where she's sober. Water. On a strict schedule. It's very, very busy. They keep us definitely on our toes. And working through past trauma. It's definitely better than being on the streets, you know, and just broken, lost, hopeless, sad. She has chores and work. That's definitely a lot of cleaning. But is on light duty with her pregnancy, which often means helping with cooking. Then you could come to me and I'll add some flavor. <laughs> She takes time to pray daily. My favorite building, besides the kitchen. My higher power keeps me going, and just my determination to want to be a better woman and a better mother. And at the end of the day, this is where we live. She can lay her head on a bed in her own space. If you've been in jail, it's not bad at all. It's actually luxury. The consistent roof over her head, part of what's making her recovery possible. It's going to be a struggle. I know it's not going to be easy, but I'm excited and I'm happy. Despite it all, she considers herself lucky, knowing other women in her shoes might not have the same access to help. I'm finally happy in my life and keep on waking up and just telling myself it could be worse. We lost touch with Jane in January 2023. The phone numbers we had stopped working and the I-team learned she'd been booked in jail. I did um, make an appointment for my hearing to get um, taken care of the warrant. But I ended up going into labor, and that's why I didn't show up. It turns out Jane was facing forgery charges from a case last year. She'd missed at least two hearings, and the judge issued a bench warrant, and she was arrested again in late January 2023. 
the day that I had my hearing is when I went into labor and had my baby. Okay. I have a newborn at home. There's no way that I can go home today. Jane tried to explain to the judge that she didn't know she missed the hearings. The I-team reviewed court records showing that notice sent to Jane was returned to the sender. She clearly didn't receive mail while she was living in the SUV. Um, I don't have no money, though, to make bail, and I have a newborn at home. She's a, she's a little, like, I don't have family here, it's just me. She told the judge she gave birth to a girl, one who needed her mom. And she was a premature baby, and she was in there for, like, three weeks, so I was back and forth with her. I was in the hospital, too. I got real sick where I had blood transfusion, so I was stuck in the hospital, too, for, like, a week. But this time, a judge wasn't going to let Jane leave on her own. I'm not going to change your bond at this time. Please, ma'am, I'm, I'm begging you. I promise that I will do everything. We wrote to Jane in jail, and she even tried to call me. All from at the Maricopa County Estrella Jail. But couldn't get through. She was released in February after taking a plea deal. How do you plead? Guilty. She was sentenced to probation, and she told the judge she had a place to go. Do you have a place to stay? Yes, ma'am. We tried to find her. The address listed in the police report was an old one, and a new family was already living there. We looked for her SUV in the parking lots they frequented before, but no luck. We thought we lost contact with her for good, until mid-March, when she reached out from a new phone. She said she was still living in the SUV with her partner and their newborn baby. She said any attempt to find a shelter that could take all of them was unsuccessful. Only I can get us out of it, only he can get us out of it, so we put our strengths together and we will be back up there. When we talked to her in November, she was an open book, despite her circumstances. She was eager to start a new chapter. That's one thing we have is a lot of faith. But for now, the road ends here. Another generation hidden amid Arizona's homeless crisis.